Hi, George here. And I thought it was about time that we took a look at Photoshop Elements 2026 and see how well it does at replacing a background. And we'll be using this very easy picture here to do that. And this gives us a good chance to see exactly how accurate AI really is. And AI does have some problems, and I can point those out to you in this project. The first thing we need to do is to make a selection of the background. Now, I could use the AI tool over here, the standard selection tool, but I don't like their selection brush that much. It leaves a lot to be desired. All the smaller brush sizes are very hard to get to, and you can't type any brush size over here. But we don't need to worry about that because, of course, we have up here select and background right there. So go ahead, we'll try this one out. And this gives us a really nice background selection. Only problem here is that it missed this one bit right down there. So I need to subtract that from the selection. We're already on the subtract, so let's just brush that out. There we go. Okay, a nice background selection. And this should be an easy job for the AI to come in here and give us a different background. Now, the first problem with AI is that you can't get the exact picture that you want. We can tell it what kind of picture we want to have in the background and describe it very carefully, but it's not going to be exactly what we want. So if I had a nice photograph I wanted to use back here, I couldn't ask AI to put that photograph in behind the picture. So we're a little limited there. If you don't care that much about the specific background, then AI is great. If you want a very specific background, then you should do things the standard way, which is just to put a new background layer in here with your background picture and stick it in behind your foreground subject with the background removed. Easy enough to do anyway. Let's see what we can do here with AI. Let's go over to our AI tool and notice how it is now using that background selection perfectly. So no problem doing that. You can make your selections ahead of time using any selection tool you want and then go over to the tool and we'll use that selection. All right, let's just put in something down here. And I think we'll put her on a tropical island. And the way the AI works is you describe what you want to see. You don't describe the process you want AI to do. So I'm not going to put down here, change the background to a tropical island. I'm just going to put in a tropical island. And if we want to have it so it's not really giving us all kinds of stuff, let's just put down here with a white sandy beach and palm trees. So we're a little bit more specific on this. And let's click on generate and see what we get. Now it does take a few seconds here to do this because this is happening up online. It's happening on the Adobe servers. So you have to have a currently active internet connection for this. And there we go. And I think that looks really nice. Maybe it wouldn't have chopped off the water one side and sand other side right behind her. I might have done something different on that, but we get four choices down here. Let's try our second one. And that's looking great. I think that's a really nice picture in here. Let's try our third one. That's pretty good too. It's a little more subtle. And our fourth one in here, that's also fun. I think I like this picture right here. And let me show you something about how AI works. This is kind of interesting because it paints in a new background. It also paints in a bit of an overlap as well. And that sometimes can cause some interesting problems. Let's come back down here to the background. I'm going to select our subject and that will give us a selection marquee just like that. And if I go back to our picture up here, you will notice that the subject didn't have any hair over here. This bit of hair was added in. We had some stuff over here that was taken out. The shoulder angle was changed a little bit. The actual edge of the dress here on her left side, that's been changed a little bit. The outline of the hat has been changed. It's pretty close up here. It's pretty close up here and along here. It's a little off right down here. It's quite a ways off right down over in here. It's a bit off right at the top there. Kind of hard to see with that branch in the background, but it's a little bit off here and quite a bit off over here. And it also added in some more hair down here. So these kind of things happen when you're using AI. It's not going to be giving you the exact same picture. For instance, look at the hair in the hat right here. You see how it kind of comes in at an odd angle there. It's possible that this background was placed in after the fact by somebody else. And AI spotted that and they replaced the missing hair right down through here. It also, of course, changed that curve. Take a look at the area right down here. I'll change the scene there. There we go. Slightly different curve on the hair right down here. So you will have things like that happen when you're working with AI. It's not gonna be giving you an exact edge on your picture. It may change the edges, may change the outlines of your image. So just keep that in mind. If it's not that critical, and in this picture, it's not that critical, then you can just ignore that and not worry about that. If it is critical, let's say it's a fashion picture and it has to be exact, or it's a portrait they want to have exact, then you're better off not using AI for this and instead coming in here and just making a very careful selection and replacing your background. Let's say you wanted to use AI for the background image, but you wanted to have your nice clean foreground selection. You can still do that. Let's take a look at that. I'll do control D here to deselect. Let's come back down to our background layer here. So it's a combination this time. I'm going to right click on this. Let's duplicate the layer. I'll hide the background, that's my standard technique. Let's select our subject, there we go. And let's make a layer mask of that. 
And here's our new layer mask. We now have a cleaned out background. Let's now come down here, make a new layer right here, layer one, and go back over here to the Gen AI tools. And let's choose the left side, which is to create a new image. And we'll give it the same kind of prompt over here. A tropical island with a sandy beach and palm trees. This will give us a whole picture covering the whole image, but it'll come in on its own layer. So let's choose generate. We'll again have four options down here. Okay, here's one. Here's the second one, a third image, and a fourth image. These images came in on a square ratio, so I have to change that. Easy enough, just control T, bring the transfer handles. Let's just stretch our image out like this to fit. There we go. So we can stretch any of these images. Now that we have our image, I'll bring it down here to the layer underneath our girl right there. We can then cycle through these and see which one we like the best. Notice each time I cycle through, it jumps back up to the top again. So you need to pull this down each time. But that's okay, it's a minor issue. And let's go with this background. And again, I'll resize this, Control T. Bring some more control handles and this just enlarge this to fit. Have a little bit of space top and bottom now. I can come in here and adjust that a bit. Maybe like right here. Choose done. And there we go. This time we had a very careful edge and we retained the shape of that edge exactly because we're working from that correct image using just the select subject. But we still have our AI background. So if you combine two techniques, it can give you what you want. Now I did just notice right here we have a hole in here where the earring is. That's in the layer mask. We can fix that easily enough. Just go to the layer mask and let's grab our paintbrush. We have it on some white paint. Bring my brush size up here. That's the right square bracket key. And I'll just paint that in like that. That's just fixing that layer mask. And this is just one of the new features here inside of Photoshop Elements 2026. There are a bunch of new features and a lot of them are really nice, really useful. If you want to find out more about those features and learn the whole Photoshop Elements program so that you can become a master at this, then the best way to do that is with my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. And I'll put a link for that at the top of the description. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Also make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any videos in the future. And I'll see you next time.